Hey everyone, moving on with some of our exam objectives and taking a look in this video within the assembly modeling category. We're going to take a look at the first one listed, create and manage top level assembly and sub-assemblies. So this one here, we're going to move into Fusion. I guess probably one of the details that we need to be aware of within Fusion is what is the difference between managing kind of top level assemblies and kind of working with some of the some of the facets of various components and parts so here i have at the very top this is the active component this would be considered the top level assembly which says it's unsaved i'm going to go ahead and say to save it and in in our project lead the way curriculum I'm going to go ahead and create and just use an automata as an example. So I can't think of really anything better than with all the different parts and pieces and everything that we have going on. So here's what I have is with the automata, I'm going to go ahead and do a top down assembly where I'm going to model different parts. So for example, here I'm going to create a new component. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and name this box bottom so which is going to be the bottom part of our automata box within this now you'll notice the active component goes down to the component i just created so now anything that i create belongs to that component so i'm going to choose the bottom plane and i'm going to go ahead and just create a center rectangle and this should be a five by four inch piece i'm going to finish the sketch and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to extrude should be a quarter inch thickness and I'm gonna say okay so here's the thing that I want to be aware of is I want to create another component but I don't want to create it within while this box bottom is active I want to go ahead and go back to the top level because otherwise if I create a new component it's gonna create a sub assembly within that component so for example I'm gonna go ahead and say new component and you're gonna watch this icon so let's say I want to create the box side. Now you're going to see the, the icon changes to two blocks. And now the box side is housed, if I collapse this, is housed underneath the box bottom. So it's not really the, assemb the kind of top level assembly we want it to belong to. This become, became now a sub assembly. So I really am just going to go ahead and say, uh, let's delete this component. And now you'll notice the box bottom goes back to being a single component. But when I'm ready, I'm going to activate, make sure my radio button goes back up to the top level. And now look at the automata here. Now it becomes a sub assembly. I'm going to go ahead and create a new component box side. And now you're going to see that the box side is its own component underneath the top level assembly. So now, I can do something like this. I can create a sketch. I'll choose from the side here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create. We'll do a four inch by four inch square. I'm gonna say finish. Put this into the home position. I'm gonna extrude. This is gonna be a negative 0.25 just to send it in the direction because the sides sit on top of the bottom piece. And then I can go ahead and say okay. And you're gonna notice that even though we build it off the top of the bottom piece, that now you can see this part is kind of ghosted out. So the reason why is because only the box side is active. If I go back up to activate the top level, now both sides are showing up in a solid gray. So it means we have everything selected, whereas if I just want to activate the bottom, only the bottom is activated. So that's kind of the idea behind managing these top level assemblies, is that we can go ahead and we can bring some of those things in. So, and that's kind of the idea but main idea behind a lot of this so um and then as i go along i'm going to go ahead and see let me see if i can find an automata in my automata demonstration project here um i do have some standard parts to which i'm going to go ahead and i'm actually going to open up a new design and i'll show you the example of a sub assembly so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to insert a follower into this new which I do need to save first so I need to save this part first we're going to call this the um, we'll call this the follower assembly 
And then the folder I'm going to save this in. Let me go ahead and put this into my actual, my Autodesk certified user. And let me insert this follower. And let me insert a roller. So usually what I like to do is I like to include, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this so that way it's in the correct position. And I like to go ahead a lot of times is because we have a lot of these parts. Let me go ahead and join this part to follower. It's going to be a rigid joint. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this follower assembly. Let me close this down. And when I go to bring this in, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to where I had this saved. So now once I go through again, I want to make sure the top level assembly is active and I want to right click and insert this follower assembly into which I'll need for later. And just for the sake of keeping the video time kind of short, I just want to go ahead and show you what's kind of happening. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, okay. And I'm going ahead and I've placed these objects here. So here's my follower assembly. And if you look, it has a sub assembly icon and it shows a link, meaning that it is tied to these two parts or, or these two components are tied to other files, which is what we have going on here. So this is kind of an indication that this is a sub assembly of what we have going on. We can do some editing in place, which is something that we get into some advanced kind of things. But here you can expand and see, okay, we have a follower component. And when you look underneath the follower here, there's the component. Here's the roller component. And when you select them individually, they go through and they will highlight in the graphics area. So this kind of, um, you know, organization, creating and managing is what we are looking for as we look to kind of bring in some different various parts and things like that. And so that's really kind of what this is all about is how to manage that browser and be able to read and understand kind of what's going on. And down here in the bottom, you can tell uh, from a top level assembly, I created a component, I used a sketch, I did an extrusion, created another component. And then you can see the component, there's one with a link in there. So that's a pretty good idea that maybe this is a sub assembly that has been brought in from another file. And so these types of sub assemblies can be done pretty easily like that. So. All right, so again, this is another exam objective that has been covered, how to manage and take care of those top level assemblies and then look for sub assemblies within your file and how to read that in your browser as well as to see how that is created within Fusion 360. If you have any questions or anything, again, feel free to contact me, but hopefully this gave you a lot of good info and a way to review and, and uh, better prepare for your ACU exam. Good luck and check out more videos for other exam objectives that are being spotlighted for the ACU Fusion 360 exam.